Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming life. Thank you for joining us to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming life. Thank you very much for joining us today. We've got a whole lot going on around the ranch as we round out the month of September. This is the last video of the month. Our very next video, we will go around and take a look at all the animals of the ranch, but for today, We've got a lot of preparing to do. Hunting season starts in the month of October, which means we're gonna have hunters here on the ranch all month long. Hopefully we get a chance to take you guys along for a hunt, uh, a good old fashioned antelope hunt and be able to show exactly how that works and everything else. We're gonna do that probably for the very first time uh, this month if we can get one of our hunters to, uh, to agree to do it. Also, uh, we've gotta get ready for them. So we've got cleaning going on in the sales barn. We're kind of picking up here and there, making sure that we've got space for them, freezers, all that kind of stuff but there's still the day-to-day -day of the ranch that has to happen. So while there are 900 other things happening elsewhere, there are the things that have to be done every single day. Now we've already finished up our morning chores, those are done. Uh, also we did our tour, which is coming to an end at the end of the month as well, and we won't have that hanging over our heads every single day. But today we've got three major projects that, that we have to take a look at. They all have to do with animals and they all have to do with the safety, welfare of animals, including food uh, that we're gonna be dealing with. Number one, we are gonna head over to the steers, our A and B team, and we've gotta clean out their corrals. Uh, that'll be quick and easy. We'll head over there with the skid steer, we'll put the bucket on and we'll take care of that. Also, our, ba our bacon bits, which are living back in the pig pen, uh, they need food. So we are actually gonna lift a 2,000 pound bag of food about, uh, what, seven to eight feet in the air and dump it in their feeders. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Also, we are gonna head over to the chicken house and we're gonna take a look at our completed chicken house project and we're gonna clean it. Unfortunately, one of my favorite jobs in the world might be a little easier now that we've redone the entire chicken house. So that's all coming up today. Uh, we'll get started by heading out to the skid steer and heading over to the steers. It's gonna be a beautiful day on the ranch today. We're looking for a high of 85 degrees here at the end of September, which is pretty much, well, unheard of. Um, we've got, uh, two inches of rain this month, which is great, uh, which is keeping things green. But normally by now, we would have already had our first frost. We could even have snow on the ground by this time of year. And uh, it's been unseasonably warm. For the hunters, that's gonna mean something completely different. But for us today, it means that we have get a nice day to work in. There's our 2,000 pound bag of pig feed. We're gonna be dealing with that in just a second. But for right now, we're gonna jump in the skid steer here and we're gonna head over and uh, well, first we got to grab a bucket, then we're going to go over and we're going to clean up a whole bunch of poop out of the steers area. So let's get to that. in finishing school where we have the B team over there and the e A team over here, uh, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do. And the problem is that these guys are here, especially when I wanna bring in a big piece of equipment and start moving stuff around. So we are gonna stash these guys over in the arrow quip, uh, the loadout area. And we've got a few holding pens over there. We're gonna shove them in there and we're gonna keep them separated, obviously A team and B team, so that when we're done, they can come right back in. So the A team here, they've got about a month or so left on the ranch until they're out of here. Um, I think they go sometime in November. We're hoping that they weigh about 1,200 pounds when it is time for them to go. The folks at AeroQuip, of course, uh, designing this corral system for us, which is a huge help in order to have some holding pens, which we've got right over here on the side, 
and uh, help us put these guys somewhere out of the way. We're actually gonna bring them through our tub, which I've now opened up on this side, which puts them in this little holding corral. Plenty of room for all of them. We wanna make sure that all of our gates are closed, of course, so that they don't, uh, see, there's one that's open. They could have pushed on that, popped it open. Next thing you know, they would have been on the highway. So not a bad idea to check all your gates when you're doing stuff like this. So we're gonna bring them in really quick. Uh, at least the A-team, we'll get them up in here. The B team, I think we'll actually put in the tub area. They don't have any water or food in here, but we're only gonna be in here for a few minutes. Hopefully we'll run around and clean all this up really fast. Now with these guys held up here in this front corral, I, technically I do have a gate here that I could actually close and have the rest of them back here, but I don't really need to mess with that. We'll let them have a little bit of room to wander around in. We're gonna bring up our next group and they're just gonna go in this tub area right over here. Plenty of room for them to work with for the next 20 minutes or so while I get this all cleaned out. That's our B team. Those guys are here on the ranch for another three months or so. And when the A team leaves, they become the A team. A new B team is selected from out there in the pasture somewhere. All right, so we've got a little bit of poo to clean up. It's nice and dry over here, which is really nice. A lot of powder. Uh, we'll just be able to scoop this up. What I like to do is actually set up kind of a windrow over here. Uh, this is where my gate's at, so I'm going to push everything over here, kind of build a little bit of a, a pile in this area, and then all at once I can push it all the way back down. Pretty simple, nothing major, but something that needs to be done about uh, once every couple weeks, maybe three weeks over here, uh, depending on how bad it is. So, I'll get that done, and uh, I'll be back with you guys in just a minute.
And so here's the thing, you're never gonna get every last little bit of poo and everything else out of this, uh, this little feedlot here. But being able to use the skid steer makes a huge difference and um, one of the things that we worry about is obviously digging down into the into the, the the hard pack that we have underneath this corral that we spent so much time building and, and making sure it was here. Um, so with that, we actually have a little feature on our skid steer that helps out immensely, and that is a float feature on our bucket. I'll show you how it works here really quick as soon as I dump this little run around. I do is I drop my bucket all the way down and then take that leading edge of that bucket put it down just a little bit and then I'm going to press this little button over here and what that does is drop that bucket down even further but now the bucket is floating as it's uh, moving across the ground it's moving up and down with the level of the ground which allows me to skim the ground without actually digging down making any more problems than I need to so We'll make one more trip around and then we'll, we'll clean up a little bit of a mess and we'll get out of here. The other factor, of course, is the smell, which isn't horrible. In fact, uh, we have our feedlot here pretty close to our Airbnb or to our Airbnb, and of course, the RV park, uh, which is just around the corner here. And honestly, we have never had one complaint all summer long about the smell. Keep on top of it, makes it a lot more tolerable. Time for us now to bring our cows back in. And we're just going to do it the reverse of what we did before. The B team comes first, and then the A team back in their corral. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Let's go. And like that, we're done. Moving on to the next thing. We're gonna go over and feed the pigs a ton of pig food. That's our next stop. Another th quick thing I wanna mention here is that we are working on better and newer ways to do this, including a scraping blade that will be coming up in future videos that attaches to the skid steer and allows us to clean this out a little bit more efficiently as well. So that'll be a lot of fun to play with. In the meantime, yeah, I'm going to run back across the road. We're going to grab a ton of pig feed and lift it uh, way up high in the air and dump it in their feeder. This is our 2,000 pounds of pig feed uh, that we're going to be going and in, putting into the pig pen, into their giant feeder. Should be relatively easy, probably the quickest part of our day, but really quick, I wanted to tell you guys, you remember the, uh, the mixer that we got and uh, the ability now that we'll have to actually mix our own feed? 
this is the probably the last bag of pre-mixed pig food that we will have to buy here on the ranch. We'll be able to mix our own in the upcoming months and years, and hopefully we can come up with a good recipe to be able to share with you guys uh, for max protein and max growth on our pigs. However, this is what we've been giving them for years. This is a pig grower, it comes from Dakota Mills, and uh, yeah, about 2,000 pounds worth. So let's go put it in there. So I need the tractor to lift this because I need to get it uh, like eight feet off the ground or something like that. So I need the tractor to be able to lift it up high enough. Also, I have to have enough reach to reach inside of the pig pen, inside the pig corral, to be able to drop this off in there. So we're going to swing back and hopefully uh, no problems. I say that and I'm like, hey, remember where we're at? You ever work here before? No problems. Should put that on a t-shirt. All right, let's go. thousand pounds by the way not really uh, a big task for this tractor uh, this tractor is rated I think up to about four thousand pounds so not too bad uh, to be able to move around I can lift it pretty high I don't have to worry about any kind of tipping or anything like that uh, the rear tires in this tractor are actually weighted uh, with beet juice believe it or not and uh, so that keeps us from tipping forward when we have so much weight hanging out over the front end Let her go, and in it goes. And it's already done. Boy, that was fast. Ah. We're pretty full. Got quite a bit of feed in there. And how it works, and how it works is they have the little doors down there, they open them up, and the feed falls down and through. One of you, one of you guys want to show us how it works? Come on, somebody show us how it works. Come here. I'm blocking like four of their, their little doors, so they're having a fit about it. There we go. Pigs are happy, and they're fed. All we have to do is get the lid back on it, and uh, we can move on to the next thing. That's probably the trickiest part of the whole deal. The bags will actually recycle and reuse uh, when we mix our own feed using our mixer so and I have to do that later on this afternoon but one last thing that we want to get done today is the chicken house I want to go over and show you how well it turned out since we did our complete uh, chicken house remodel we did redid all the floors in there and we're gonna see how easy 
it made it to Clayton. And here we go. Here's our chicken house. Let's go inside and take a look and see what it looks like. Now it's completely done. Been dirty up a little bit. There's the new hallway. Of course, the goat area over here definitely needs some work. Lots of straw and hay in there. Chickens have been working on it pretty intensely, though. On this side, this is where our younger hens were. Still pretty clean. And I don't think it's going to be that hard to clean up. As you can see right here, I can kind of pick it, make it all nice and pretty again. So our sandbox, our litter box or whatever you want to call it, working pretty well. Uh, we come in here with the sifters, we lift up the, the roosts, and we're able to sift through that and get that all cleaned up. And then on the big chicken side, over here, these are our laying hens, and this is the laying hen side. Not bad at all, really. I mean, you can still see the floor. Um, our roosts, or our, our, our litter boxes on this side, completely done. We'll go through, we'll get those cleaned out a little bit. Still got some chickens sitting up in here laying some eggs. There's an egg right there. All right, so I don't think this is gonna be half horrible. Going through here, getting this kind of cleaned up and uh, pretty much just swept up, hopefully. In the past, when we've had to come in here, it's taken, you know, <laughs> like uh, like chippers and, and, and big, sharp shovels and all kinds of cool things to, uh, to clean all this out. I think this is literally just going to take a broom. I, I really do see this being a whole lot easier. So let's start out over on this side. I think the bad part is going to be the goat side, just because we did put straw down in there, um, which is going to be a bit of a pain to clean out. But over here, I think we can just sweep it up. So let's give it a try and see how it works. Wow, look how easy that was to clean up. Just a, a little bit of sweep in action. Got a little bit more to do on the other side uh, for the younger chickens, and then we'll get the, the goat area cleaned out. Then we'll come back through with our sifter and go through the litter boxes, see how well that works. Now that side had a little bit more to it, uh, just because we, <laughs> I know, just because we put down um, shavings in there, so we had to pick all those back up. I don't know if putting down shavings really made any difference. Um, obviously we got it all cleaned up in here, as you can see. And putting down shavings, I don't know. I, I kind of think like I, I'm, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I didn't do it on the chicken side. And it was perfectly fine. It was easy to clean up, just sweep it up. Over here, we had quite a bit more to sweep up in a much smaller area, and that's because we had all those shavings to deal with. Same thing over here in the goat area where we have straw that got put down as well. We're gonna have to pick all that up and get it out also. You remember we also put those pellets down in here 
um, those horse pellets or whatever, I can't remember what they were called, they were Jeffs, um, and they stayed like pellets until they got wet and then they turned to sawdust. Um, they were pretty good, they did make a little bit of a mess in here, but no more than shavings or anything else would have. The straw obviously soaks up a lot of the urine also, and of course goats, unlike chickens, pee. I guess chickens kind of pee in a weird kind of way. Goats actually pee. Chickens take care of both at the same time. But this way we may end up actually putting shavings back in here for the goats just because we don't want all that liquid to build up in here. But we'll see what it looks like underneath. I'm oh, starting to sweat. It is a little warm in here. I think I told you it was going to be 85 degrees today. It's already up to 83. And uh, you can imagine how much hotter it is here in the chicken house. <laughs> 83 degrees going into October. Super crazy, weather wise, anyway. And the best part about all this is this is all compostable. So we'll be able to recycle this right back into the garden. Hey, Jeff. Jeff happens to be over here. It's a little warm in there. I'll give it that. You should come look at this. I think, first of all, next time it's your turn. <laughs> but uh, that rubber floor made all the difference, man. Whoever's idea that was, you're a genius. Yes, you are. <laughs> Really? We've been at this for like an hour. This is an all-day thing before. Yeah, exactly. This Come is... take a look over here. Oh my gosh. This we didn't put any shavings or anything down. I just came through here with the broom and just knocked it out. Nice. And then back here we did put shavings down. Hi turkeys. But even then it still came out pretty good. Oh yeah. This is way better than before. Yeah. Like you said before, this was an all-day job yeah. to get all this cleaned up. And uh, now, not even, I don't even think I was in here an hour. No. No, not even close. So we've got one thing left to show you guys, and that is our shovel um, and uh, our sifting procedure. We're going to knock that out really quick, and then I'll cut you guys loose. Yeah, I will. <laughs> um, can you head over and start getting the mixer ready? You bet. And we'll uh, we'll mix up some feed while we're at it today. You got it. I don't want people to think that we're just taking the rest of the day off or anything. <laughs> no, we'd hate to do that. I hate to do it. Alrighty, guys. In the video where we came up with the idea for the uh, the sandboxes, which really wasn't our idea, and neither was the rubber floor, but we'll take credit for it. We came up with this. This was our sifter. It's a pitchfork covered with hardware cloth at a quarter inch. You can use it to sift through the soil and the, the sand that we put underneath the roosts. Cool deal is, I've got a wife who uh, likes to make my life as easy as possible, and she ordered me this. This, basically the same thing, but the professional version. We're gonna go over here on the chicken side and see what kind of damage we can do with this thing. Turkeys are gonna go over here. Okay, so we didn't do the fold-up roosts like we did on the other side. Here we actually used old panels that we had laying around and put them in for these ladders or these roosts. All I have to do is just move it out of the way and I should be able to get to down here and be able to clean that out also. Here's our new shovel. Oh, 
look at that. That's awesome. That works like a dream. A little bit more to go through, obviously. Get this side and this side cleaned up. It's gonna take a little while. Jeff, in the meantime, is getting us ready for our next project, but I'm gonna cut you guys loose and uh, let you guys go for the day. Three jobs pretty quickly here on the ranch, cleaning out the uh, steers, pens the, uh, in the, the finishing school, and then, of course, pig food, and now the chicken house. Three really big jobs that needed done are now crossed off the list, thankfully. <laughs> well, almost. I still got a little bit of work left to do in there, but I'm happy to have it done. Now here's an idea. If anybody has a Roomba that they don't mind seeing destroyed, I wonder if it could keep up. <laughs> Especially one of those with the charging base and all that kind of stuff. Just put it in here, let it clean your chicken house for you. You need like a super Roomba. Maybe that's a, a marketing plan for those guys. The shop Roomba, the chicken house Roomba, the corral Roomba. I'd go for that. I'd pay extra for that. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with me once again. We really do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary every Monday and Thursday. And a few bonus videos thrown in there as well. If you like what you see and you want to see even more, check us out on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Our Wyoming Life. You can order beef and pork directly from the ranch. In fact, those steers that you saw over there, they'll be on the website soon. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming life. Happy chickens? Are you happy? Happy, happy? How can you tell if a chicken's happy? No idea.